Hello and uh, welcome to our second lecture on uh, regression. Uh, in the previous lecture we provided you with a motivation for why uh, linear regression uh, could be a very useful data analytic uh, tool and today we're going to take um, we're going to take the ord ordinary least squares regression which is one type of regression and actually uh, step through the process and in some sense derive the formulas or the math that uh, enables you to convert that data to uh, uh, performing a regression analysis um, and the context in which we're going to do that is we're going to do a simple regression which just means that there's a single input variable only involved and uh, we're going to step through the mechanics doing that okay so what is the broader context of this exercise um, so we we introduced we gave you a motivation for linear regression in the previous class and since then you should have had uh, a few a few classes by professor ravindran uh, talking about machine learning in general and also uh, a module on supervised learning and uh, we we purposefully chose to straddle uh, regression uh, around uh, before and after supervised learning uh, partly because uh, it's important to realize that uh, you know regression linear regression the whole process or any other form of regression is a supervised learning tool uh, you know su supervised learning being a more of an umbrella term definitely encompasses uh, regression and regression based approaches and this is despite the fact that for instance regression is something that has existed many 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 years before you know even the terms machine learning or supervised learning or artificial intelligence was even thought of um, so uh, you know you, the context that you often learn regression could be quite different you, uh, you, where you learn it from a statistics course uh, whereas in a machine learning course then the emphasis sometimes might be on other tools um, or not I mean depend depends on where uh, what what the focus is but the important thing is to acknowledge is that while regression sometimes stands alone in your statistics textbooks not sharing pages with uh, the other machine learning techniques the regression linear regression uh, is just as much a supervised learning tool as anything else uh, any other supervised learning tool um, another uh, source of confusion that I just wanted to clarify before uh, proceeding is supervised learning techniques tend to get broadly classified as uh, regression um, regression style problems versus classification uh, problems and uh, out there what people are meaning is quite different from what we are learning as regression uh, at this stage uh, out there what people are talking about and it's just a definition is when they say it's a regression problem in supervised learning all they're saying is that the output variable is a continuous quantitative variable whereas when they say they're dealing with a classification problem they're saying that your output variable is a discrete or categorical variable and you know within those two broad classes you have many techniques and some techniques um, comfortably handle both uh, types of data but that sometimes gets people confusing saying it's a regression problem doesn't mean am I doing a regression no out there people what people are meaning is that um, that the output variable is continuous quantitative okay okay having said that uh, let's let's proceed with uh, what we uh, want to do today which is deriving the ordinary least squares uh, regression okay so the goal out here is to fit a line essentially of the form y is equal to mx plus c so that's the form that you might have heard of more frequently um, what we're going to use in this uh, class and in most uh, classes is y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1x um, and that's you can readily see those are both the same I've just replaced the m and the c with two other terms um, so the coefficient is beta 1 the intercept is beta naught so a line once someone comes and tells you um, the values of beta naught and beta 1 or M or M and C whatever you, you prefer but if someone comes and gives you those two values then you can define a line if someone says draw a line right you can draw different lines you can draw a line 
uh, like this you can draw a line like this you can draw a line like this these are all lines now um, these are all uh, as straight as you can see them lines um, but once someone comes and gives you the exact um, beta naught that is the intercept and the slope that's a very specific line only one line will have that exact beta naught and beta one right so that those two terms are what define uh, the line and to give you some intuition beta naught is nothing but where the line intersects the y-axis so if you wanted uh, different lines with the same beta naught but different beta ones then you can think of many lines that go like this uh, go like this that go like this right these are all lines and just keep in mind I'm trying to draw them as straight as possible so these are all lines that essentially have the same intercept beta naught um, and different slopes beta ones um, similarly um, you could have uh, different lines that have the same slope but different intercepts right so that would look a little bit like this so these lines all at least in what at least in terms in theory have the same slope um, but different intercepts right now if but once you've defined a slope and an intercept there's only one line that has that okay so so that's the idea and uh, what we're trying to do out here is saying what should that slope and intercept be such that you feel like that's going through a lot of your data points now I've said that in a fairly vague way but I'm going to define that more formally right um, to define that more formally you want to have a concept of the actual data point right this is the actual data point all those squares are the actual data point and what the estimated value of those data points are so this data point has a value a particular value so that we'll call that y1 right and this data point has another y2 and so on and so we call those the actual values as yi and for each of these now if I chose to fit a particular line that I feel is like going through this data I'm going to have some predicted value so what I'll do is I'll fit this line that is I'll put this line here and I'll say my prediction of this y2 is y1 is nothing but for that value x1 right where is my line so if I push this value x1 up to the line what value am I getting of y and this is my predicted y1 and it's represented usually with this small hat that you put on top okay and the same process for y2 I'll, I'll try to uh, write uh, this uh, actually that line is not perfectly correct so let me just erase that um, essentially what I would do is I'll say this is my y2 I'll draw a line there this is y2 okay but my prediction for y2 is right here okay so I'm gonna put a dashed line here and this is x2 Okay, and my prediction is y hat of 2 out here and you guys can see what I've done right so I've basically said look there's this value of y2 um, and it corresponds to some x2 and uh, I'm gonna take x2 and see where my line goes through in terms of y values and this so this is in some sense my actual value and this is in some sense what I would wind up predicting for y2 right because I've tried to kind of fit some line through the data and you might ask the question so if this is x2 then why don't we just predict y2 um, in the sense why isn't y hat of 2 equal to y2 and the answer is fairly simple you don't want to predict the exact data point because you are getting a sample they've discussed how this is not the population so the population here for y2 would be if for the same x2 I had the entire universe of possible y's 
and we know that for this same x value if you were to take another sample that might not fall exactly on this data point the next one could wind up falling somewhere here the next one could wind up falling somewhere here the next one could wind up so we don't have the, the entire population of possible y's at the uh, x value at the input variable value x2 and so what we wind up doing instead is not predicting exactly on top of that value that you got but instead trying to fit this line acknowledging that there's going to be some noise above and below and you might do better off predicting uh, at this point where uh, x intersects with the line and that's your predicted y2 okay this is so that you don't wind up um, getting fooled in some sense by just some amount of noise or uncertainty there is above and beyond the exact that the trend that you're citing the line is in some sense indicative of the trend that is which is that in general when x seems to go up y seems to go up and that's what the line is showing at least this particular line with a positive slope and you want to capture that so that tomorrow when someone says what will uh, what do you expect when x is equal to this value you go to the line rather than you're going to the actual uh, as, uh, an individual data point okay so so that's the idea which is so you now have the concept of um, actual uh, yi and yi hat and the goal uh, in terms of what you, we are trying to do is that we are trying to minimize the squared deviation between the actual and the estimate okay so we are actually saying there's this measure which is yi minus yi hat right and sometimes yi minus yi hat is going to be positive this case this case it's positive because the actual is greater than the estimate in some cases it's going to be negative right but you take all these positive things and negative numbers for each number and square it then they all become positive and then you sum it right this is the sum of the square deviation between the actual and the estimate and it's a measure of how close the line is to its data points and what we are going to try and do with an ordinary least squares regression is figure out that line right and how do you define a line you define it with beta naught and beta 1 once you fix a beta naught and beta 1 the line gets fixed so we're going to try and figure out the goal of this exercise is to figure out that beta naught and that beta 1 which defines the line which results in minimizing the square deviation between actual and estimate right because maybe this line right with another beta naught and a beta 1 is not is very far away from your points right so the square deviation between actual and estimate is going to be huge correct or take another example this line right which is like this is also not going to work very well right because look at the kind of deviation that you have between actual values and estimated values so this line with its beta naught and beta 1 this line in red with its beta naught and beta 1 might again not do too well so what 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 are we trying to do we're trying to figure out that line and when I say we're trying to figure out that line I'm saying we're trying to figure out that beta naught and that beta 1 which is what represents a line so we're trying to figure out that line which minimizes the deviation between actual and estimate so does that does that kind of uh, make sense okay, good um, okay so how do we go about uh, doing this right uh, the way we go about doing this is the process of the derivation we start by saying this is the functional model we have we have a model which says that yi is nothing but beta naught plus beta 1 xi right which is the line that we are creating we don't know what beta naught and beta 1 is yet but if you had a beta naught and a beta 1 your line would be nothing but beta naught plus beta 1 plus some amount of error right just going back for instance to this what we're saying is each yi which is nothing but this value so this is y1 is nothing but 
is equal to right where you can get to in the line right so it's equal to this distance right and this distance can be defined as beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 right because this value is x 1 so this distance y 1 is nothing but this distance beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus some amount of deviation which I'm going to call as error right this is the deviation between actual and estimate that y i minus y i hat that distance I'm calling as the error okay so ultimately y i is nothing but beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus e i and I should really say beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus e i which is what I have done out here so I've said y i is nothing but um, the model plus the noise okay so we'll call that model or you can call that y i hat and the noise okay now all I do is just rearrange the terms such that e i is on one side okay and we have said that our goal is to minimize so this is that deviation between y i and y i hat and our goal is to minimize the square of the deviations for each data point so I'm going to go through i equals 1 through n right I'm going through each data point 1 through n all the way um, and for each data point I'm trying to look at the deviation between actual right and the model and this is your estimate or you can think of it as y i hat so this is what you're estimating and this is what is the actual value you're taking the difference between them and squaring it and it's the the, the you get the two minus signs because you can think of it as minus and put the beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 uh, beta 1 x i into the brackets and then when you open the brackets the minus comes in front of both terms so you're ultimately just taking the summation of the square the square term is here the square of the deviation between actual and estimate okay and that is what we're going to call a sum of squares error and that is what we're going to try and minimize you essentially want to minimize the squared deviation between actual and estimate and you can also kind of think of it um, the, this is one way of getting to the sum of squares you can also think of it with this definition which is I started by saying I want to minimize actual minus estimate squared and we know that the estimate is nothing but so y i hat is beta naught plus beta 1 x i see not, notice the difference right y i is beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus the error term whereas y i hat which is the estimate of y i is just beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 this basically defines the actual and this defines the estimate okay so you can just plug in this beta naught plus beta 1 xi and, and I'm using the words beta but it, it really these terms are still uh, b so b naught plus b 1 xi would be more accurate so b naught plus b 1 xi and, um, and and when you plug that in and uh, expand that uh, you this is this is exactly what you get the same uh, notion of sum of squares error which is cycle through each data point and uh, look at the difference between estimate and actual so our goal in determining beta naught and beta 1 see y i and x i are data points that you've collected from the field x i represents the input variable y i represents the output variable so you have uh, 10 20 or 100 or thousands of x and y pairs so for a particular x there was a particular y and there are i such uh, there are n such uh, x and y pairs and i is just the index that represents a particular combination so x and y are actual data points b naught and b1 is what we're trying to determine and the way we're going to determine that is by finding what values of b naught and b1 minimize this function okay so that's the exercise that we are embarking upon
Okay. So how do we do that? Um, like I said, our goal is to minimize this term. And the way we're going to do that is to take a very basic idea from calculus, right? Which is that you take the first derivative of this term and equate that first derivative to zero. Why do we do that? It's a very basic um, idea from calculus, which is when you if you can take on different values of beta naught and beta one, and right now these are the two variables of interest, y i and x i are uh, actual data. Okay. The idea is that if you fix one, let's say you fix beta one, and you keep on changing beta naught for a given beta one, there exists a beta naught, right, where this error will be the lowest, and so for a fixed beta 1 if this was the variable beta naught I'm plotting beta naught here and I'm plotting the sum of squares error right this is SS e out here the core idea is that um, you are going to get as you keep on changing beta naught for a fixed beta 1 you might get a function that looks um, let me make that more smooth uh, no I'll just try again um, I might get a uh, beta naught that you might get a function, a smooth function like this, um, which basically says that there exists a particular beta naught value where the sum of squares error is minimum. Now, how do you go about finding that? It's a simple idea that if you take the slope of this function, the slope of this function at different points, the, at the point at which sum of squares error is lowest, that slope is equal to zero. So the idea is that. Um, the slope is nothing but a tangent to this function just like slopes always are and this is what is considered a positive slope um, a flat line is considered a zero slope and this is a negative slope on the left hand side so the idea is that if I take the first derivative which is nothing but uh, the derivative of a, of a particular function is nothing but the slope of the function um, and if I take the derivative and equate it to zero then I should be able to find out that value of beta naught right which gives me the lowest value now remember I of course said beta naught for a given beta 1 right so I might get that in the form of um, in the form of beta 1 but then what I can do is I can do the same exercise that I just did for beta 1 I can say for a given beta naught as I keep changing beta 1 what is that value of beta 1 that minimizes it so essentially you'll wind up having uh, a concept two equations with two unknowns the two unknowns are beta naught and beta 1 the two equations are um, what you get when you derive with respect to beta naught and what you get when you derive with respect to beta 1 so b naught and b1 again um, so what you get when you derive with respect to b naught and what you get when you derive with respect to b1 and then you equate that to 0 right um, and then you have uh, two equations with two unknowns that's just a simple form of simultaneous equations for you to solve it um, and as you can see what we've done in each of these is to take the first derivative and these are partial derivatives because um, because clearly you're deriving with respect to beta naught but you also have another variable in this equation beta one same here these are partial derivatives because you're deriving with respect to b1 and you have a uh, another variable which is b naught in the second equation okay so uh, but the core idea is this which is you take two partial derivatives of the sum of squares error uh, with respect to b1 b naught and b1 and solve for the values of b naught and b1 such that you will be able to get that b naught and uh, b1 which uh, minimize the sum of uh, squared deviations in a sense okay uh, so we've explained that in principle let's actually go through the steps of how we do it now first we're going to take care of the first equation uh, that we saw which is this equation so let's just call this one and this is two now we're going to just do the process for one okay you take the first derivative and all what you might notice now is that I've essentially brought um, this differentiation in because it's the sum of the we were looking at the first derivative of uh, a sum of terms which should logically be the same thing as the sum of the first derivatives of those terms and what I do here is I'm differentiating with respect to beta naught 
okay so you can do this in many ways you can just basically take this square and just expand it and say what is yi minus beta naught minus beta b1 x1 xi times because it's a square times the same term again and then you'll get many terms and then break them up or you can use something fairly simple called the chain rule which is just that this is a function of b naught so i'll first take this square of the function and uh, do uh, you know the use the usual idea that x difference uh, the first difference of x square um, the derivative of x square is 2x so the 2 moves out and the derivative of minus beta naught is minus 1 so the minus also comes out and so essentially uh, you can use whichever approach uh, in differentiation that you like but this is um, the answer uh, to this uh, step okay now all I'm going to do is equate it to 0 right and then I'm going to uh, start solving it so what I do is there are many separate terms here again so summation of a minus b minus c you can basically say it's a summation of a minus summation of b minus summation of c I've done that and I have reshuffled uh, the the, the uh, terms in this equation such that beta naught comes to one side because we are interested in beta naught um, now beta naught is a, essentially a constant right it's a, I mean it's a variable in this equation right now but it takes on one value it's not like xi which takes on different values depending on what the value of i is right so if I'm s doing a summation from i equals 1 to n each xi will be a different value but beta naught is not a function of i it's the same beta naught for whatever value of i you pick so it's essentially out here you're all you're doing is you're adding n such b naughts and that is nothing but n times b naught so what we'll do in the next step is to just isolate uh, b naught and therefore what if you notice we took that n that was coming up on this side and we moved it as the denominator okay so uh, that's what you're seeing here in terms of moving from uh, the previous step to this step and finally um, we realize that the sum of yi divided by n which is the number of times y diff the different y's is nothing but y bar it's nothing but the sample mean the sample mean is nothing but the sum of uh, your data points divided by the number of data points so uh, this is the easiest representation right again we've just simplified equation one of a two equation combination with two unknown variables hence b naught is described as a function of b1 now we're going to solve for b1 by substituting the values of b naught with the term on the right hand side so let's do that here is the derivation of b1 again the same idea which is you're doing a partial derivative over the summation and uh, again you can take uh, this term inside it should be fine and again you can use the chain rule for deriving it or just basically expand um, this whole set of terms expanded by the square uh, and you can do it uh, that's that's your uh, convenience um, but one additional thing is it won't look exactly like b naught because the coefficient for b naught was just uh, this minus 1 whereas the coefficient for b1 is uh, you have the minus but you also have the xi so minus xi so the answer is also going to look a different the result of this derivation is this value um, and essentially you, you have an xi in brackets yi um, but this derivation again should be fairly straightforward once you do this derivation you get this um, and you again go through the process of um, breaking this down or simplifying it right again you had a summation over this entire set you can break that up into many summations so uh, that that's what we've done here in the next step now reshuffle things such that the bi the b1 sorry comes to one side so that's what we've done here the b1 comes to this side and on this side um, you would have had only um, s these two terms correct but the problem is okay so this b1 I just shifted to this side 
which is what you're seeing here but the look the right hand side is looking different and the reason for that is because in the right hand side only these two terms should have been there okay but again look it's a function of b naught and we know now from the previous exercise we know that b naught is equal to y bar minus b uh, b1 times x bar right that was the conclusion i'll actually show you that uh, value right let's just erase we conclude that b naught is equal to y bar minus b1 uh, times x bar and let me also erase this and that's ex ex exactly what we're substituting uh, what we're doing is we're going ahead and substituting um, this b naught with that term so yes we have shifted this to this side and that's how you get the left hand side of the equation but on the right hand side in addition to this y i x i we've substituted the value uh, of b naught with uh, another term right again note this summation y i divided by n is nothing but y bar summation of x i divided by n um, that the ter two terms out here and here are nothing but y bar and x bar so we said y bar minus b1 uh, x bar okay um, and of course this xi out here just stays out here okay okay so that should uh, give you an idea of where the expansion is now again what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep all the b1s to one side so this this uh, guy out here also gets shifted here and uh, so that's what you're having on the left hand side of the equation and um, the right hand side uh, at this step gets unaffected and finally you can just simplify this it's just basic algebraic simplification to get to the final form of b1 okay so what do you do when you're given a whole bunch of x x's and y's and you need to fit a line through it um, you use this formula essentially to get the slope b1 and if you look there's nothing in this that has b naught in it it's just a function of y's x's and n and uh, xi squares but again that that's from xi and n is nothing but the total number of data points and you can use this and get b1 which is the slope of the equation and then you can go and substitute b1 out here um, and you know x bar and y bar from the data and get b naught and as you know once you have a b naught and a b1 you have a line on your hands and we essentially use this is the process of ordinary least squares regression where you uh, take a bunch of data uh, x, x, x y pairs of input and outputs and fit a line through that such that you're minimizing the square deviation um, between the line uh, and the line represents your estimated value of y for a given x and the actual data point y okay i hope uh, that uh, was clear and that is your ordinary least squares derivation okay thank you